Hey everyone, this is the third episode of Detour, and today we are in San Francisco with a good friend of mine, Tarek Azim. He is the founder of Empower, which is a incredible gym in San Francisco, but it's much more than that. He trains and uh, works with some of the most successful people in the world, CEOs, investors, uh, entrepreneurs, athletes, and what I wanted to talk to him about, because I've spent a lot of time at this gym, is insecurity. It's something that I never thought when I saw these people that they have an ounce of, but I'm learning, learning more that some of the most powerful people on earth are very insecure, or have a hard time being vulnerable. And Tarek's gonna talk to me about that, and we're gonna talk about confidence and things like that. Simple topics that we think the rich and powerful don't really have to deal with, but Tarek has been an expert in kind of helping people overcome these kind of issues. So check it out. All right, so I'm out here in San Francisco with my buddy Tarek, and we just had an interesting lunch conversation. And one of those things is being insecure and vulnerable. And the reason why I wanted to talk to you about this is you coach, train some of the most successful people on earth. And I know this because I'll walk in here and he goes, do you know who this is? You should meet them. And I'm like, oh shit, it's, and obviously they're confidential, but the most powerful people on earth are walking through your gym. Mm -hmm. Are they insecure? Are they vulnerable? Uh, it's funny that you would think they aren't, right? I wouldn't be. Yeah. Because I was a billionaire. I have so much confidence now and I don't have anything what these guys do. Sure. Sure. And I think that that's where, where, where language has been lost, right? With what insecure means, with what success means, like all the different types of things. And I think one of the, one of the coolest experiences and learnings from here and this experience with these folks has been recognizing that everything that we've grown up being scared of is actually what you need in order to be able to break through. Yeah. Right. Well, give me an example. For example, like insecurities is something that we're terrified of. Insecurity yeah. is something we're ashamed of, right? Yeah. It's actually like, that's your steroid. Like that's the thing you need. You yeah. need to be able to embrace your insecurities versus fighting the insecurities versus trying to change them versus trying to hide from them, right? These folks acknowledge it and embrace it and utilize it as fuel of like, okay, great. How do I make this taste good versus taste so bad? So give us an example of that. Cause like, I'm thinking of a billionaire, successful guy, 30s, 40 years old, has everything at the fingertips. What are they insecure of? So, man, it's like, the, it's insane, yeah. right? The, the list is insane of the things that these folks are in, in, insecure of, but I think the, the, the biggest and most common one is not being understood, right? It's because people have defined success for them based on what they've accomplished and what they have versus what they are. Yeah. Right. So this insecure, this like insecurity kind of starts to arise when folks actually also start to lose identity themselves because of how people are acknowledging this individual as a success story. Dude, but if, if you're like, if you're listening to this and you're not a billionaire, don't you think that's just like, oh, that's just a rich person's problem. Like, you know, you're just going through life and oh, people don't understand me. You know what I mean? Like, sure. I understand that it is tough and there are things, but like, how do they like, how do they get over that where they become more relatable or like, you know, in their work? Well, I think the most important thing is smacking people in the face with the ultimate reality, right? Yeah. This is where my conversation of death always comes into play, Yeah. right? There's only one guarantee in this universe, yeah. which is? Death. Right? Yeah. And there's only one thing you take to your grave. What is it? It's right. actually just a feeling. Yeah. That's all you take to your grave. Out of yeah. everything you have, you literally strip everybody away. And this is what the youngins need to understand. Like if they, if I knew this, and, and, and was taught this when I was 20, 21 years old, right? Now I'm 36. I, I'm grateful for where I am, but I can only imagine where I was if the mindset, if I never took shit personal, number one. Yeah. Number two, never believed that anything was mine, yeah. right? So I think that the play here was primarily based around making people extremely conscious of the only reality in the world, which is death, and the only thing in this universe is a feeling. Well, insecurity is actually a feeling. You could choose how you want to define what that feeling of insecurity means, right? Yeah. So getting with these folks, what makes them successful is what everybody sees, not what they feel, yeah. right? So when I get folks, it's primarily based around like, what is it the only thing you take to your grave? It's a feeling, okay, what do we do to feel like that every single day? What else can you do in your life to be able to get that feeling you want to take to your grave? So it's legitimately just creating a safe place to be able to be real. And, and what do they do to get over that? Is it, cause you're obviously physically training them. 
So why I do the physical component is because I don't believe there's anything in the world other than physical activity that exposes true human character and ability. It's the only thing you could do in your life and you can't lie. That's true. Right? So why I believe physical activity is such an important correlative tool to our discussion, which I call a game plan. And game plan in reality at the end of the day is just a brand for something called an honest conversation. The fact that the word honest is in there is really scary to people, yeah. right? So that's why I call it a game plan. And when they come in here and they sit in that seat right there, I start digging in asking questions that they want to ask themselves what they won't, yeah. right? Like what means what to you? Yeah. How do you want to take your last breath? How do you want to feel when you die last? Yeah. Who could you forgive? Right? How do you feel about yourself first? No one else is in here, that's right? Crazy. So it's these types of realities get smacked in the face like, holy fuck, this is real. And all I do with the physical activity is I utilize that as our space of communication and realization to where like I asked them at the end of the game, what do you want me to what do you want me to hold you accountable to? Yeah. Through physical activity, that's what I do with these folks. If they want to quit or shit gets uncomfortable or I'm getting, you know, tired or I'm getting shaky, I just kind of remind them of our conversation of like what means something to you more than anyone could ever see. Yeah. So it's primarily about this fight for something only you could feel and nothing can come between you and that feeling. And and so I think when you're successful and you're reached a point in your professional career, you can take that step back and realize those things. Because you said it yourself, when you were 21, you didn't uh -huh. realize this. Uh -huh. How do you come to this realization in your 20s and your 30s? Because I know the people you're- Identifying what success means. To right? you. To yourself. Yeah. Identify what success means to you that you don't ever have to explain. Right? And I think that's where- so we, it's confidence. It's, it, yeah, I mean, because look, every single human in this world <coughs> is born with confidence. How many times have you seen and heard, oh, Tarek's done so good with like instilling confidence. I don't instill confidence. Like, confidence yeah. is already instilled. Yeah. I think what I do and people like yourself do and the squad of like individuals who really care about the next generation do is we expose that in people, yeah. right? You had it all along. You had, you were born with it. Like yeah. imagine when you were a kid, right? You were two, three, four years old. Fearless. You'd shit on a slide and still go up and down all day long. Go, come on, slide down on that, that slide. I just took a <laughs> shit on because I just don't care. Yeah. Right? Because your intentions. Yeah. Like your intentions weren't to make it. And just, you have confidence. Just being what you are. Yeah. Right? Why do people think kids are so fucking cute? Yeah. Because they're honest. Yeah. Right? It's the same thing with us as we get older. Like so many of these like rules and regulations and like fulfilling of people's expectations kind of start shifting our own landscape and start tampering with our confidence. You know what's a really interesting correlation that I think young people can understand? Tell me. Have you ever seen a 20-something year old person try to post a picture on Instagram? Yeah. It takes forever. It does. Right? Do you know who the most successful people on social media are? Old people. Hmm. Why? They don't give a fuck. Exactly. They're just posting, you know, like, you know, like our, our parents are posting, you yeah. post right. whatever. Like all the people that in fashion that my peers, that everyone looks up to, the way they treat their social media is like, this is my life. Sometimes I'm working out, sometimes I'm working, sometimes in Paris, sometimes I'm with my kids. And this is my actual life. Right. But a 25 year old or a 30 year old literally could take two days to decide to post a picture. Because right. they don't have the confidence. Right, it's because they allow everybody but themselves to have their finger on the trigger of their faith and their destiny. Yeah. Right? My proposition to this generation and to you, just people in general, or you have the ability of making a decision, right? Like you choose to put on that jacket today, right? You chose to put on that hat today, right? Yeah. Like why do you stop that ability when it comes to making decisions about yourself, about things that mean something to you? Yeah. Why do you leave that out for the universe to approve, right? Like is this right thing to do? Well, fuck, if you feel it, it is. Yeah, well, what are you doing to practice feeling every day? Yeah. Right? And I think that's where people are disengaging tremendously. It's like people don't practice feeling anything anymore. So right? what, what does that mean? Like give me an example of like what could I do? Well, what do you do every single day to understand what your ability is? Like you push by running like a motherfucker nonstop, yeah. right? Like shit gets uncomfortable. Your shin splints, right? Yeah. Like exhausted, hungry. You wake up at five o'clock every single day. Don't get home till 10, 11, yeah. right? Up with, up with your kid all night, yeah. right? You know, get sick sometimes, et cetera. But you still get up and do your uncomfortable shit, yeah. right? To be able to just understand like, look, I have an, I have an ability to break through discomfort. Mm -hmm. And my breakthrough discomfort actually makes me feign discomfort because yeah. that's when I recognize who and what I'm capable of being. And I think for me, and I don't, I never viewed it like that, but I totally agree. I always viewed it like I need to toughen myself up. And for? For life. Uh huh. Because there's good moments and there's bad moments. So you say, I, I feel like I need to toughen myself up versus you already know you're tough. Yeah. It's exposing that I'm tough. Yes. Right? Exactly. So this is where as I alluded to earlier, the significance and the power and understanding of language is so important with this generation. It's funny as fuck. Sometimes I talk to the young'uns that come around 
especially some of the young dudes that kind of get drafted and go into the league and how was today? Oh, I'm so tired. Like you automatically say that word and look what happens. And you're tired. And you're tired, yeah. right? Oh man, it was such a stressful drive. A stressful drive. Are you fucking kidding? You were driving. <laughs> What's so fucking stressful about driving? <laughs> right? So it's like these words and these triggers people use that actually release some form of action that kind of takes you away from being at your maximum state. Yeah. Right? So like my dad used to say, God bless his soul. Like, don't say anything unless it's more beautiful than silence. Right? Amazing. Choose your words. Choose your action. Be really measured. Be thoughtful. And look, look at the impact. That's unbelievable. Last final note. You're listening to this right now. What's one actionable thing that someone can take away from listening to you? Define how you want to feel on your last breath. And I want everything in your life that you do literally to match that feeling, right? Like, oh fuck, I mean, I, I should read this, but I should, no, is it going to tamper that feeling? Yeah. Right? Or should I forgive this individual? Well, imagine how much cleaner your heart would feel if you did. Yeah. Right? So my whole goal with a, a takeaway from this thing would be that people really define how they want to feel in their last breath and make that the practice that they hold themselves accountable to every day. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you, man.